Now, in this part, what I've done is I've just drawn a quick sketch then of the line L1 passing through the points A and B. And we're told that there's a point C then that lies on the line L1 and the distance AC is 5. We're also told that the X coordinate then of this point C has a value P. So where is C going to be? Well, I don't really know actually. And it really doesn't matter as long as we place it at some point on here, whether it be up here or down here, it doesn't matter. Let the mathematics do the work. Well, what I'm going to do is put C just say here, all right? So C, this is the point C then, and we know that the X coordinate of it is P. Now, if we know that the distance AC is five units, then I need to get an equation that connects that length to these coordinates. So in the background, what I should know is that, and I pointed this out, by the way, in the video in the last part of the question, the formula that you can use is based on Pythagoras' theorem. So what I know is that AC squared, the hypotenuse squared, if I was to construct a little triangle down here, let me just do that for you. Okay, it's a right angle triangle. AC squared equals the difference between the x coordinate squared, so let's just call that x1 minus x2 all squared, plus the difference between the y coordinates all squared. All right, so we call that y1 minus y2 all squared. So I'm going to be using this equation to answer this problem, but the problem is. I don't know what the y coordinate is at this stage. So that is really the first step in solving this problem. I need to get that y coordinate. Well, I know that when x is p, if it lies on the line L1, and I know that the line L1 has equation y equals a half minus a half x plus six, okay? Let's just write that in, by the way, that the equation of the line L1 is y equals minus a half x plus 6. So what I can do is just literally substitute x as p and that will give me the corresponding y coordinate for c. So let's just do this down here by saying that when x equals p, y equals minus a half and then put the p in for x, so we've got minus half p plus 6. Okay, so that means I can put this value back up here. So we can just say that's minus a half p plus 6. So that gives me my y coordinate of c. Now I can turn to this formula. So I can say that since ac squared equals the difference in the x coordinates and it doesn't really matter which way around I do this, to be honest, because, as again I pointed out in my last video in the part C of the question, that when you have a negative value in here and square it, it's still going to be the same value as if you had the positive equivalent. So what I'm trying to say is that if we do the difference in the x coordinates, we've got p here minus 2. p minus 2 all squared, that's that distance squared, plus now we need to do this distance squared, which is the difference in the y coordinates. Now I'm going to choose this y value here, first of all then, and so that's going to be minus a half p plus 6, and then minus the y coordinate here, minus 5, and square that. Now all I need to do is to simplify this. I also know that AC is 5, so I can write 5 squared or 25 equals. Now let's square this bracket out here. P minus 2 times another P minus 2. Well you should know that's going to be P squared. Then you're going to have minus 2P minus another 2P, so that's minus 4P. And then minus 2 squared, which is plus 4. Here we've got 6 take away 5, which is 1. So if I was to square this bracket out, 
we've got minus a half p all squared, which is plus a quarter p squared. Then we remember this was one, so we've got minus a half p minus another half p, so that's going to be minus one p or just minus p, and then we've got plus one all squared, which is plus one. Okay, what could we do next? Well, we could multiply through by four if you like, and uh, get rid of this fraction here. So if we multiply by four, we've got four twenty-fives, which are a hundred. We've got this p squared becomes 4p squared. We've got minus now 4 lots of 4p, 16p. And then we've got 4 times that 4, which is 16. This term here just becomes p squared. We've got minus 4p now, plus 1 times 4 is 4. Grouping up this as a quadratic equation in P. We've got 4P squared plus another P squared, that's 5P squared. What else have we got? We've got minus 16P minus another 4P, that's minus 20P. And then we've got 16 at 4, which is 20. And then I'm going to take 100 from both sides. So 20 take away 100 is minus 80 and that equals 0. Now all I've got to do now is divide through by 5 because each of these terms is divisible by 5. So if I do that, what have I got? Well I've got p squared minus 4p minus 16 equals 0. And that's what we had to show. Show that p satisfies this quadratic equation. Okay. So that brings us now to the end of this question.